<laughs> Welcome back to Qtronics, where I have all the gear and no idea. Today, something a little bit different that I've not done before. I'm going to show you how to actually program the Mayumi V4 for the PlayStation 1. I'm going to walk you through the guides that I've found to do it, the little gotchas that I've, I've hit, and also I'll drop all the links down in the description to all the parts I've bought, so you can go and buy them yourself. I'm not affiliated in any way, so feel free to click through and do what you want with them. Right then, first of all, let's run you through the tools I've got to start with. I have the PIC 12F 508i. That's going to be important, and I will explain that in a bit. Again, I'll drop the link in the description. This one here is an E variant, and I'll explain why that's not good after. I also have a little breakout board here. So we can solder onto the breakout board, and when we do the install into the PlayStation, which will be in a later video, you'll see how this makes it so much easier to install, especially into a PU22 board. Um, we also have a SOC 8 150mm um, yeah, sorry, a 150 mil adapter, as you can see here. Uh, if you look here, hopefully you can read this. Um, and that is a SOC 8. And I also have the X... Well, how are we saying this? The XGECU or the XGECU? The XGECU Pro T48. Now, I think there's some T86LLs or some, some, there's some older version that you used to be able to buy. But uh, this is the updated version, so a T48. Um, and that's it, and that's all the tools you'll need to initially flash it. Nice and simple. Again, I'll drop all the links in the description. Right, let's head over to the monitor, and I'll show you what I found out first before we start programming. So when I was first looking for the um, how to create a BIOS chip, I came across uh, this guy's post here by uh, Kevin Chung. Now, his, po his blog post here, perfect. It describes exactly how to do it. So if we, uh, we follow down, talks through all the tools and what you need and everything. Um, and then if you keep scrolling down, we actually get to the files we need. And in my case, I'm in, I'm in Europe, because obviously I'm in the UK. So I'm going to download my UMI V4 for the European console. So uh, actually we can just right click and save that. So yeah, saves nice and easy as a uh, Mimi Mod 4. I'll just drop that into the downloads folder for now. <coughs> I already have one in here, so I'll just I'll just replace it anyway. So there you go. That's all the X files we need. That's everything we need from this thing. If you want to go and read through his blog post, though, he does go on to explain how he ended up making an Adreno um, mod chip, which is pretty cool. So. I would definitely go and have a look at this post. I'll link it down in the description. Jobs are good. And now, at the start of the video, I spoke about two different pick chips. Now, as you can see, this one's already mounted onto a board, as this was an experimental one that I was trying to work with. And uh, as you can see, I've got a couple of them because they don't bloody work. So let me explain. If you come in to buy any of these, this is what you need to buy. So as you can see, I actually purchased the PIC 508i. Now these are the ones that work, so I will drop a link down in there. This guy's selling them off quite cheap, so nice and easy. But if I show you the, the comparison on Mouser, they should be identical and they're not. So the E variant here is the one that doesn't work. So avoid the E variant, go with the I variant. As far as I can see, the only thing that it's saying down here is that the data RAM type is blank on this one, but it says up here that it's RAM, so they should be identical chips. The only thing that should be different is the E variant should be able to go to a higher temperature than the uh, than the I variant. So I'm not sure why they don't work, but I've tried about seven or eight of them, so they just don't work for me for whatever reason. So if you are going to get any of these, make sure you get the I variant. Again, you can get the ones that go into the board if you don't want to use this, but I find these are. Uh, these SMD mounted ones much better personally. So right, once you've done that, we've got the file. That's the majority of the things we need off the internet. Um, if you do pick up a uh, T48, the software called, what is it, uh, XG Pro. That's the software the manufacturer recommends. So I'll download that. There you go, the old variant here, as you can see on the screen, it used to be called the TL866. So the T48 just, Directly replaces that. So any mention to the TL866, just you can get yourself a T48. 
and it'll work the charm. So right, if we accept that, right, next thing we need to do is change the chip type. Obviously, I've done this before, so you can see it's set. Now, as we're using a SOP 8, we don't need to click on any of these. So we just click on, actually what I'll do, I'll show you what it looks like when you first come onto here. So when you first come onto here, it's gonna give you everything, everything you possibly can. So you might as well just search for the voice you've got. And when you search pick, you get obviously microchips. And uh, we can go a bit further. And you can see only microchip makes them. So we click the first one, jobs are good. And if we click select, there we go. That's it, the chip is set now. And if you come over to the voice info, you'll see how they uh, they want it set up with pin one in the top left. So let's get our sock point. So we get our sock, bang it into pin one, which is at the top here. Snap that in place and that's good. And then we can drop our chip onto this. If I zoom in ever so slightly for a bit more. Now, if you've not messed with SMD, if you've not messed with chips before, there's a little circle on it here, and that indicates pin one. Hopefully you can uh, you can see that on there. So if we drop pin one in the pin one section. Now, as I said at the start of the video, this is a 150 mil. You can get 200 mil ones, and if you get 200 mil, it'll be too big. So make sure you get a 150. If you buy a set with a T48 though, they come with these as standard, I believe. So you'll probably be fine. Right then, and then we can just plug in the uh, the device into the computer. And as you can see, we have power. And as you see on the screen there, it now says the program's connected. Perfect. So the first thing we want to do is make sure the chip is blank. So if we, top left corner up here, there's a blank. We click blank <coughs> and click blank. It'll tell us if the chip's blank or not. I mean, ooh. So it's saying the chip isn't empty. Let me just check. It might not be pushed in properly. So just bear with me. You want to check all the pins are aligned as well. Sometimes they don't just sit nice. Right, let's try that again. Here's when I find my first dud chip. <laughs> Classic case of the demo. Just making the chip, I'm sure the chip's definitely in place, which definitely is the pin ones at the top. Let's try that again. I'm just going to change which port I'm plugged into here because sometimes my PC has issues. Let's try this again. That's my programmer being a bit weird for some reason. Hmm. Oh, there we go. The, for whatever reason, my USB was being weird. Right. As you can see, it's not actually blank. So someone has messed with this. So if we do a blank check, you'll see the blank check fails. Again, I bought these from someone else who would potentially use them. That shouldn't be an issue. We should be able to completely raise this, first of all. And now just to confirm, if we check, make sure there's a blank now, this should come back as a blank. Perfect, we're getting a blank. So if we read this now, all the information down the left-hand side there will just disappear and it should all be blanked off. Great. Now, as these are PIC 508Fs, they're reflashable. You, the guide does say you can use C, does say you can use C variants, which are one-time only flash. So if you test the C variant and it's already got something on it, the chip's dead. Right, now we've done that, we can load our X file. 
as you can see, I've already got them downloaded prior here. So if we open the X file and load it up, it gives you this out of address memory purely because it's a hex file and not a solution file. So you can ignore that. And as you can see on this left hand side now, uh, the top it'll say Miumin. If you scroll halfway down, in my case we're European, so you will see SCEE. -E. I think SCUS is the US and SCEJ is the Japanese one. Again, we're on a European console, so that's good. Now, here's the thing lots of the guides fail to tell you, and it took me a while to, fight to figure this out. If we go over to config, there are these three boxes here, which should normally be ticked, and they don't get ticked as standard on the XG Pro because of that out of address memory where I told you it's not a solution file, it doesn't tick them. So we actually wanna have the MCLRE ticked and the WDTE ticked. If we tick the copy protection, which is slash CP, when we try and verify the chip, it won't verify, so we can turn that one off. So as long as we have these two turned on, we are ready to flash. So now we can go to program and program. And it's verified it, it's all working fine, perfect. Now what I like to do now is <coughs> reload the X file. And turn that config on. And do a verify, just to make sure it all comes back as normal. And there we go, it's completely, completely fine there. So if we do a file, clear or buffer. So this is if nothing's loaded now. And if we read back the chip, you'll see it's reading back as a Mayumi V4. And if we go over to the config, both config items are turned on. And that's it, that is how easy it is to flash the BIOS. But the final thing I like to do then is to solder it onto a breakout board. So I'll show you that, just so there's a little bit of soldering in this video, and then we're done. So then look out for the next video where I'll be installing it into a PU22 board. And I will drop in this video the link to Console Unleashed's guide showing you how to install it into all the PlayStation boards. If there's a particular PlayStation board you'd like to see me do, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can source one from somewhere as it's quite interesting to do them on different consoles to try and get the wiring right because I'm still a bit unsure on how to get the wiring really nice but I think with the PU22 board which I think personally is the best board for the uh, PlayStation 1 purely because you've got the better you got the better CD drive and you also still have the X, the EXT port on the back which means you can connect to PSIO best of both worlds best of both worlds have your discs working and a PSIO so I personally think the uh, the PU22 board is the best one you can buy. But if there's any other boards out there you'd like me to have a look at, let me know in the comments. Right, I'm going to solder this on and then we'll end it there. So we can get the uh, get the chip out. Get our little board. And I'll zoom in for you on this one. Nice and simple. Now with this board, as you can see, there is a marking to say pin... Oh, let's get you focused. Right, let's get you on my hand. As you can see, there's a mark in here to say pin one's here. You might be folding thinking that pin four is here, but no, this is pin one. You can see the track going up there. So right, let's get it soldered on. It's making sure the dot goes on pin one. This should be nice and simple soldering, nothing major here. All right, let's get my soldering iron on. Obviously, I would normally get the scope out, but as you can see, there's only eight points, and I don't feel there's any need, really, to get the scope out for it for you. Um, it's very simple to solder onto. And I'll put a little bit of flux down, just because, why not? And the only thing I suggest you do now here while you're here, if you are using one of these breakout boards, is just filling all the holes on the side, just because it makes it easier for the next part. So let's just do that now. Give it a visual inspection, make sure all the legs are actually soldered on. And there you go. 
there is a PS1 my Yumi version 4 mod chip made so simple so quick the most difficult part is getting all the bloody parts they uh, become expensive um, I do I will have these for sale so if you want to buy any hit me up in my uh, let me know in the comments or better go to discord or Yates I'll drop a link to my discord on my chat on my description if I can I, I think you can and you can come and ask and I'll uh, we'll look at sourcing them I'll also keep your eyes out soon I'll have a video on making some new PSIO switchboards as you never have enough especially if you've got multiple consoles having multiple switchboards makes sense and also I will have a video on making the BIOS chip um, I've not got one out at the moment to show you but as you can see I've taken a few out of some PlayStations here so I'll have a video on how to actually make the BIOS chip which then you can put in the PlayStation and have the game ID. I will link a video in the description to what I mean for that. So uh, let me know. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully that's been a big help to you. And uh, please like and subscribe as it helps my channel to grow. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you want to see. And I'll catch you next time. See ya.